In this video, I'll show you how you can get charred marshmallows to spark in a microwave. Warning, do not try these experiments on your own or in microwave ovens used to cook food. It is actually quite simple to do this experiment. First, I'm going to heat this marshmallow with a blowtorch. It's important to make sure that the marshmallow is heated to glowing. It turns out that the surface of the marshmallow needs to be heated to very high temperatures for the experiment to work. Okay, I think I've heated the marshmallow enough. Let's put it in the microwave, turn it on, and see what happens. Oh wow, that's really neat. But how does it work? How in the world can it be that a charred marshmallow sparks when microwaved? To begin to answer this question, recall that metals can spark when microwaved. Also, it's useful to know that metals are good electrical and thermal conductors and these properties contribute greatly to the ability of metals to spark when they're microwaved. It is my hypothesis that when a marshmallow is heated to a high enough temperature, such as with a blowtorch, a conductor forms on the surface of the marshmallow, and this conductor contributes to the ability of the charred marshmallow to spark when microwaved. Of course, this leads to the question, how can a conductor form on a marshmallow, which certainly is not metallic? Well, a marshmallow is comprised mostly of sugar, and the chemical formula for sugar is C12H22O11. You're looking at a molecular model for sugar here. Notice that the sugar contains a lot of carbon, which is represented by black spheres. There happens to be a form of carbon called graphite that is a good conductor. Here we are looking at a molecular model of graphite just a bunch of carbon atoms linked together in hexagonal arrangement to form stacked sheets of carbon. Thus, it could be that heating a marshmallow with a blowtorch causes the sugar in marshmallows to be chemically transformed into graphite, which is a good conductor. And we know what happens when conductors are placed in the microwave. We're now going to test the hypothesis that a conductor forms on a marshmallow when it's heated to a high enough temperature. First, we'll light this marshmallow on fire using a lighter. Notice that the marshmallow does not glow very much when it burns. Now we'll use this conductivity meter to see if we formed a conductor on the marshmallow. Pay attention to the red light at the top of the conductivity meter. I place the probes all over the surface of the marshmallow and I don't seem to notice any conductivity. Now let's heat this second marshmallow with a blowtorch. You'll notice that I make certain to heat the marshmallow until it glows orange hot. Okay, once again we're going to use the conductivity meter to see if we've formed a conductor. And you have to look really close, because right there you see just a slight flash of red light indicating that there is a conductor on the marshmallow. Okay, now we're going to take both the marshmallows we'll place them in the microwave. Remember, this is the one that was heated with the lighter, and this is the one that was heated with the blowtorch. Now, we'll turn the microwave on. As expected, the marshmallow heated with the blowtorch sparked, while the marshmallow heated with the lighter did not. 
It is likely that the presence of small amounts of graphite formed on the marshmallow heated with a blowtorch, and this graphite caused sparking in the microwave. Using the conductivity meter again, we see no evidence of a conductor on the surface of the marshmallow heated with a lighter. Oh wow, we notice excellent conductance on the marshmallow that sparked in the microwave. The sparking probably caused the marshmallow to be exposed to even higher temperatures than the blowtorch alone, allowing for even more graphite to form on the surface of the marshmallow.